guys, welcome to my first drive video on the BMW G82 M4 CSL. About six months ago, I had the opportunity to look at one of these in detail in a studio in Munich. And I actually walked around that car with Dirk Hacker, who is the head of engineering for BMW M. If you missed that particular video, there'll be a link to it up here somewhere. I suggest that you watch that either before or after this video because we go into some detail about the static car and what has changed compared to a regular G82 M4 competition rear wheel drive. Since then, I was lucky enough to go up the Goodwood Festival of Speed Hill as a passenger in an M4 CSL. And even from the passenger seat, I could feel that the car was very special and very capable. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing a Bedford Evo track day and Evo magazine actually had this very car for a few days and they took it out on track. And I followed it for about half a lap in my M2 competition. They weren't pushing it too hard, but once again, I could see how stable and capable it looked from behind. So I've had lots of teasers. I've spent a lot of time walking around this car. I've spent a lot of time in a passenger seat and I've spent some time following it on track. So I'm really dying to get behind the wheel of this one today, but we have only got it for a couple of hours, so there's only so much I can do. BMW only produced 1,000 M4 CSLs, and the UK were allocated 100 of those. The colors that were available are this car, frozen Brooklyn gray, sapphire black, and alpine white and they retail at about £130,000, but you had to get an allocation. There was very few options apart from those three colors that we talked about and a couple of seat options. So as standard, you get the M carbon bucket seat like I have in my M3. So the seat that is optional in the regular M3 and M4, but you can also opt for a serious bucket seat, which was in the car that I looked at in the studio. That seat was very aggressive, almost like it had just been torn out of a GT4 race car. Be really good if you're gonna track your M4 CSL all the time. But I know from my own personal experience that these regular carbon buckets are probably a much better daily seat. Out of the box and by default, it comes with Michelin's Pilot Sport Cup 2R tire, which is essentially their barely legal slick track tire which you really wouldn't want on a day like today but thankfully BMW UK fitted some Pilot Sport 4S tires which should be much more suited to today's test drive. This CSL is based on the G82 M4 competition rear wheel drive except BMW M have managed to extract 100 kilos out of this making it 1,625 kilos. So it's still no lightweight, but it's certainly a fair chunk lighter than the regular car. And they've done that by, well, removing the rear seats, taking out bits and pieces of the interior, titanium exhaust. We've got a carbon bonnet and a carbon boot, both of them absolute works of art. Um, lighter weight wheels, although it is the standard uh, wheel and tyre setup size-wise. So we've got um, 19s on the front, 20s on the rear, 275 section, 285 section. So they're the same size as the ones that are on my M3, well, when that was new and it had its standard wheels on it. It also comes with carbon ceramic brakes, which helps reduce that overall mass. And the suspension has been reworked. There's a lot more negative visible camber on this car. And from my passenger ride, at least, it feels like they've replaced some of the rubber bushes with more solid ones. The car also sits eight millimeters lower than an M4 competition. Before we talk about what's under the bonnet, the CSL has a very unique front bumper and grille design. It's far more open than the regular M3 and M4, but I am concerned by how open it is and the fact that on the lower radiator, there are absolutely no guards down there. So anything the size of my fist or smaller could fly through there and pierce a radiator. So that would be concerning if you had it on track. I would recommend definitely fitting some kind of mesh behind that. And of course, the styling around the back, well, we've got that beautiful carbon ducktail boot lid. I wish I could have something like that on my M3. It would finish it off perfectly and it weighs next to nothing. In terms of the power plant, well, we have the familiar S58, 
but BMW M have tweaked it slightly to produce 550 horsepower. So that's 40 horsepower up on the regular unit. The torque figure of 650 newton meters is exactly the same. And I'm guessing that's because the ZF eight speed gearbox is torque limited. Talking about the gearbox, well, they've done many tweaks to that. Apparently the gear changes are a lot faster, etc. So we'll see if we can experience that when we take it out on the road. And this is a rear wheel drive only car. So all of that power and torque gets fed through those rear 285 section Pilot Sport 4S's. In terms of performance figures, well, BMW claimed that it would do the 0 to 62 sprint in just 3.8 seconds. That's only a tenth quicker than the regular M4 competition rear wheel drive. But I think that must be traction limited because, well, as we found out recently, my M3 X drive will do 0 to 60 in about three seconds flat. But once it gets going, this will do 0 to 124 miles an hour in 11.5 seconds and go on to a limited top speed of 190 miles an hour. Jumping inside, well, it's a very familiar place, although there have been some changes. First one being this Alcantara clad steering wheel in front of me has a red strip or stripe at the top, just like the one in my M3 from Royal Steering Wheels, except this one is overly fat and has way too much girth. You know, I think about wheels that have too much girth, just takes away so much of the feel. When we look down here, well, we have a completely unique center console, all beautifully finished in carbon, um, kind of like an upmarket version of the one that we found in the F87 M2 CS. Uh, all of these controls are fairly familiar. There's a lovely picture or diagram of this exact spec M4 CSL in the center of the uh, instrument binnacle there, which looks really cool. And I'm glad to see that they didn't update the CSL. This is the pre-update interior. So we have all of the climate control buttons, etc., down here. As talked about on the outside, this particular car has the regular carbon buckets, which I think for 90% of CSO owners, um, they're gonna be the ones to have because even out on track, these are fairly supportive. But if you are gonna be using your CSL more on track, um, then the full bucket, bucket, buckets are the ones to go for. Uh, what is nice to see is we still have door cards in the doors because I remember the um, F82 M4 CS, as brilliant as that car was, you didn't get any door cards to save a little bit of weight, but actually in reality, um, it took away a lot of the drivability of that car on long distance journeys and stuff, you had nowhere to rest your elbow but you don't have anywhere to rest your elbow here. Um, this all drops away. And yeah, let's just talk about the center console again. I can't really get my head around it because there's no cup holders. They've been removed, which is a pain. So when you've got your Costa coffee, like I did this morning when I picked this car up, well, there's nowhere to really put it. Uh, you can put it in the door card, but that's at an angle. You put it there, but 550 horsepower, it's probably gonna end up back behind me. Um, so that's a bit of a shame because I can't imagine removing a couple of cup holders has saved much weight, especially when you've still got things like um, the wireless charging bay there and this bucket here. But at least you have a USB port there and a USB-C port there. And this little cubby hole is decent enough to chuck your wallet in. Obviously another major change from this interior is the fact that, well, there's no back seats at all. Um, there's a luggage net, which you can put your helmet in if you are using this as a track car when you're going to and from the track. Um, and you could certainly put a lot of luggage back there. Um, but obviously this is a strict two seater. That's probably not a bad thing though, because I think the G82 M4, the rear seats in, in that sort of regular model, they're not particularly spacious or that usable anyway. So if you are using this car as a two seater, it's nice to have all that um, extra luggage space plus the big boot in the back. There are no split fold rear seats um, because in fact, they've done a lot of work on that rear bulkhead to stiffen up the rear end and the rear chassis of this car as they have on the front end of it. Uh, in fact, you might've noticed that that strut brace on top of the S58 engine uh, isn't 
the same one that you get in the regular M3 and M4. They've upgraded that and I'm sure they've done lots of work under the car. I wish I could and I wish I had time to put this up on a jack to have a look underneath at the suspension and any of the extra strengthening just to see uh, the extent that they've gone to. Um, but everything else in here, as I say, it's very familiar and uh, it certainly doesn't feel uh, alien to me at least. Would have been nice to have a bit of Alcantara headlining or something just to make it feel a bit more special. Anyway, we're running out of time. Let's get this car on the road. You join me about an hour later. I've been filming all the flybys and just trying to understand this CSL in the best way I can in the time that I've got it. Now, I know the current M3 and M4 very well. I've owned an M3 over the past 18 months. First, the rear wheel drive for about 10 or 11 months, and now the X-Drive version. And I've done thousands of miles in various press cars and countless track days as well. And that goes for the M4 competition as well. In fact, just yesterday, I was at the Nürburgring uh, with Michelin and BMW M doing one of their M track day experiences where I essentially learned the green hell a lot better than I knew it anyway. And I was in an M4 competition rear wheel drive. I must have done about 12 laps around the ring and the GP circuit. So you could say that I'm fairly fresh out of a normal M4 competition. I think that puts me in a good position to talk about the differences and the changes that I can feel with this ramped up CSL, even if the romance with this car is gonna be fairly short lived. off we already know this car is going to have a good driving position because the regular M3 and M4 have incredible driving positions especially with these carbon buckets which are standard in this car. The interior is lovely, great place to be, everything works well but as I talked about in the intro I'm already missing this armrest in the centre console, I'm already missing the practicality of no cup holders and no storage bin here and I'm already really disliking this overly thick uh, wheel rim. I can't believe for a second that this wheel was designed and calibrated by the M engineers. To me, this is a marketing steering wheel, um, or at least an M performance steering wheel, which I think these days is the same. M performance stands for marking performance as far as I'm concerned and this wheel yeah it doesn't do the car any favours I really wish it wasn't there and I wish I could just take the one out of my M3 and put it in here but that's where the sort of negatives end with this car because everything else just feels so special when I look forward and down that beautiful frozen Brooklyn grey bonnet and see those two carbon stripes well, I know I'm in something rather special. When I look in my rear view mirror and I don't see any seats in the back and I see a red CSL badge, once again, I'm reminded that I'm not in a regular BMW. This is something very, very special. If BMW claimed or told me that this CSL had an extra 150 horsepower and 150 newton meters of torque, I would not question it in the slightest. That quoted 0 to 62 figure that's only a tenth quicker than the competition model doesn't tell you anything because this car is just ballistic in any gear. It's, just, it's so fast. I don't think I've driven anything that accelerates this hard once you're out of first gear. It's just ballistically fast and of course it could be the case that there is only an extra 40 horsepower which I know is still 550 horsepower but when you combine that with shedding 100 kilos of weight well 
that's where that sort of total weight saving and added power, the power to weight ratio if you like, it's that figure that I'm feeling but it really makes a huge difference because this thing is genuinely a ballistic missile and you don't have to be in a super low gear either, it's fast in higher gears, it seems to have more torque lower down the rev range. I don't know what they've done, but whatever it is. And whilst we're talking about that mighty S58, well, it sounds so much better in this car, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the fact that this has a titanium exhaust, but also the fact that BMW M have stripped out a lot of the sound deadening, so you actually hear a lot more intake sound almost on the level of my M3 with the Eventuri intake. Imagine one of these with an Eventuri, wow. But you also hear a lot more exhaust sound and just organic sound in general. It's far more raw than exactly how you want your CSL to be. In fact, at slower speeds, you can also hear a little bit of diff whine. And once again, I love that. And it kind of harps back to the original M3 CSL. they've done to the already brilliant ZF 8-speed gearbox is incredible. The upshifts are just instantaneous and the downshifts are more dramatic. It just feels quicker and better all of the time. It's not quite as nice around town but they've engineered the software to make it feel almost DCT-like but in a good way. It's still smooth like the normal ZF8 speed, but the gear changes are just ballistically quick, like boom. <laughs> it's just amazing, this car. It really, really is. chassis setup is just stiffer obviously the fact that we're lugging around sort of 100 kilos less helps with all of that makes the car feel more alive when you turn it into a corner like this it just sits so flat and so solid feels unreal i really can't wait to try one of these out on track on the cup 2r tire because i just think it would feel incredible I mean, I really believe that this would rival Porsche's 992 GT3 around a circuit. I'd love to get them both together one time and really push them and see what sort of lap times I could achieve in both cars because there's no denying that this <laughs> is definitely faster in a straight line at least. It really is. The last thing to talk about is its three-way adjustable M adaptive suspension setup. As with the Comp, we have the choice between Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus when we get out to the setup menu. Today I've been in Comfort most of the day and switched to Sport occasionally. Sport Plus is just way too stiff for the public road. And I have to say, on the whole, it feels really good. Sometimes it feels a bit stiffer than the competition, but other times it feels a bit better and more fluid. So it definitely doesn't ruin the M4 as a road car, but it's definitely not as plush and composed as something like the M5 CS, which just seems to work so well on a British road. You can see through here, it's bouncing around a little bit, but it still feels really good when you start really pushing it on and the suspension really loads up. You can probably tell that I'm really impressed with my first drive and my first time behind the wheel of this M4 CSL. Is it worth 130 odd thousand pounds to those that were lucky enough to get an allocation? Well, yeah, I think it is. Just like with the M2 CS and the recent M5 CS, 
if you can afford one, it's definitely worth its price in parts alone. I mean, that carbon bonnet, that boot lid, and everything that they've done to this car, it's far more than just a marketing exercise, apart from the steering wheel. I've gone on about that a lot, but yes, anyway. The rest of the car is just brilliant. It really, really is. If I had this kind of money, would I consider one? Yes, I would. Uh, I know it kind of competes with the brilliant Porsche GT3. I think this makes for a better daily. The ride quality is a bit better. And also, you probably had more chance of getting one of these than you do of getting on Porsche's list for the GT3. It's not quite as good as the M5 CS as a complete package. I haven't spent enough time behind the wheel of this car to say that as a fact, but I really think that the M5 CS is just such a brilliant piece of kit. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you another one very, very soon. Cheers.